It's not just the classic fish out of water, but it's a fish that wants to destroy the water who's, wait, no, it's a fish that wants to destroy the land yeah. who's out of the water. Resident Alien is a classic fish out of water series, but it's kind of like a, a sci-fi show with a mix of comedy or a comedy show with a mix of sci-fi. Uh, Resident Alien was not just comedy and sci-fi. It was also mystery and Armageddon. Mm. So Resident Alien was a mix of V and Northern Exposure on the Disney Channel with a PG-13 rating. <laughs> <laughs> I like how we all just kind of stepped it up. Like I threw out some elements and Mike threw out some yeah. more elements. Muhammad. Hey everybody, welcome to Falling Towers. Watch the first podcast, the podcast in which we watch the first episode of a series so that you don't have to. Today we are doing a review of, you guessed it, Resident Alien, episode one, entitled pilot which is also Pilots. the most used title of all the first episodes i think <laughs> yeah interesting this double meaning though too because he was a pilot ah oh, yes <laughs> that's Thank why you. we have you on the show Dr. <laughs> yeah so uh with us as always he has saved at least four cats out of trees mr michael kenyon rosenberg that was when I was a firefighter in a previous <laughs> life. Uh, we are also joined by Star Trek science consultant, Duke's, Duke University's Dean of Natural Sciences. I always have to think before I say that one. And Beautiful. Star Trek and sci-fi podcaster, Dr. Muhammad Noor. Thanks for having me. <laughs> My name is Ryan T. Husk, and I put the cats in the trees. <laughs> ah, so I knew it was somebody. I just revealed it for the first time to Michael. Um, let's get into this one. This one is, uh, <laughs> boy, oh boy, is this a thing, right? There's a lot there. It sure was, wasn't it? <laughs> so, uh, everybody As Ryan's home, dad used to say, that certainly was, wasn't it? <laughs> which basically means I have nothing to say about anything, but I'm <laughs> going to say something anyway. <laughs> he has a lot of those sayings um yeah so uh we're gonna start off with my favorite part of the show which always puts me in a good mood because it's my favorite part it's at the very beginning um i don't like the very very beginning when we say this show was or resident because i panic i'm like what am i gonna say i don't know and i don't mm. plan ahead um everybody no, also ahead. doesn't like the rest of the show there's only this part <laughs> is the only part that he likes about the show i actually like it all i i look forward to it um if you want us to review a series the first episode of a series everybody just say wtf and the series below wtf stands for watch the first if you'd like us to watch the first thundercats did we already do that one oh yeah or <laughs> watch the first I was going to say all these shows we already did. Watch the first Frasier or watch the first different strokes, you know? Ho! Northern Exposure. <laughs> watch oh, the, yeah, that's a good one. Watch the first Northern Exposure. So please uh, do that in the comment section below so we can check it out. And please make sure to like and subscribe. It makes a huge difference. It saves our butts and makes our lives beautiful. Mm. <sighs> It's time for the predictions, everybody. This is a segment that we call <laughs> Prediculations. Prediculations. Pre Predicularies. Let's have a meeting to discuss that. What do you... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we predict, Michael and I have known each other for over 20 years. So we like to predict what the other person thought of the show it's not a prediction it's a spoiler because we know each other pretty well i think we're like 80 percent of the time we're per pretty right on um so everybody good it's pretty good <laughs> everybody at home make your predictions do you think i liked it do you think michael liked it do you think dr mohammed nor liked it uh i predict michael i predict that you I think you liked it a lot. 
I think you liked it a lot. I think you liked it a lot because of this guy. I think he cracked you up a lot. And I think you were already a fan of his beforehand. And he cracked you up a lot. And you enjoyed the story, uh, the intrigue, and the mystery. Uh, I would watch the first is Firefly, too. (laughs) If you were talking about this guy. Right. Absolutely. Uh, And Mm -hmm. Dr. Muhammad Noor, I think you liked it a very lot. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> like like a lot like michael but just a little a bit, bit more, more. yeah what do you think michael my predicament is that predictulation is that ryan liked it but was not in love with it <laughs> he thought it was okay uh, i'm guessing he would not watch the second of it uh, but he, oh. he 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 liked he kind of liked it for what it was uh, and Mohammed, I think he did like it, and he would watch the second. Okay. Well, I would predict similar to you guys. I would predict that that Michael, I think you were going to like it more than Ryan. I guess if I had to pick like a number, I'd say like Michael, you might give it like a a seven, or as I think Ryan might give it more like a six. So I think it's still above above that mid range bar there. But I don't think Ryan loved it. I think he just liked it. <laughs> <laughs> So like well, an we, enchantment. We, we know about uh, Ryan's past reviews of shows and how he feels about things in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a I rare like show. It's a, oh, yeah. a rare show that he likes. Um, and this one might squeak by, but I, I have my doubts. So Muhammad, you think that I am pretty okay on it and that Michael yeah, liked I think, it? I think above the mean. Like, I, I think you give it like a six where it's like, okay, that, you know, I, I would I would consider watching a second, but I'm not like, oh my god, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> and then Michael's a bit higher than that. Oh, a bit higher than that, yeah. Okay, well, let's get into it. Oh boy, oh boy, <laughs> this is this is my favorite part of this of the show. Uh, oh, when, it is. <laughs> when Michael tells us, by the way, everybody, what's Resident Alien even about? I think I can tell you. A crash-landed alien named Harry, who takes on the identity of a small town, Colorado doctor, and slowly begins to wrestle with the moral dilemma of his secret mission on Earth. In this episode, an alien hiding in a small Colorado town meets the locals when they ask him to solve a murder. Clunk, clunk. (laughs) (laughs) oh man i love the law and order references (laughs) yeah 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 that's how he learned how to speak english speak earthling is by watching law and order and other television shows presumably you sure picked that up quickly by the way and uh didn't have accents or and and Okay, we're we're gonna we're gonna cover that a little later, but yeah. uh, now well, he is much smarter than humans. Remember? So. Oh yeah, that's a good point. That's, that's in our lizard brains. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> next segment. This is probably my favorite segment. Um, it's what we expected. Expectulations. What we expected versus what we actually got. Um, Expectations. You know, we compare and contrast. The two. Um, Michael, what did you expect before you watched this episode? What did you expect? Dramatic well, pause. Before this episode, I did watch the trailer to the show, uh, which got me interested in it because I do enjoy Ellen Tudyk, who uh, played wa- the, the, the pilot washout in, in Firefly. He played another pilot there. He played a pilot in this show where he's an alien pilot in this pilot um he he he's he's a voice actor he did the the voice of king candy in uh uh, wreck it ralph yeah wreck me Um, ralph he's done a lot of other voice work too he's 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 a very talented guy and uh darth and i actually saw him at a starbucks one time so um that (laughs) i didn't like talk to him or anything like that but we're in a we're in the starbucks over at the galleria right there um you know, we're gonna go watch a movie and then we like, that's in Sherman Oaks, California. Or something. 
Did Darth fall and apart? And then, uh, and we saw him, and we're like, "Hey, is that? Uh, oh, I think it is. Yeah, it was him." So that's my story about seeing Alan Tudyk. Oh, so wow. what I expected was uh, to get back on the topic. Uh, what I expected <laughs> was to like the show, and I expected to have a science fiction. I expected it to be a science fiction comedy. So, yeah. I had a feeling you were a fan of Alan Tudyk. I couldn't remember if you'd seen uh, Firefly, which is why that that was part of my prediction for you. Uh, what did you expect? I've seen Firefly, but I've only seen all of it. <laughs> You've only seen like 13 episodes of it. <laughs> did you see the movie? Ooh. And the movie. Oh, you did see the movie. <laughs> well, Muhammad, what did you expect before you watched this first episode? So before I watched it, so I rewatched it last night, but I, before I watched it the first time, I again, you know, I'd watched the preview. And I knew it was going to be a you know combination sci-fi comedy. What I feared, which is which was not realized, was was a lot of sci-fi comedies, they tend to be like super like raunchy and stuff like that. So I was a little bit mm. like, no, I'll check it out and see if, if it's nice. But it was it was a little more Disney than I expected, which to me was very appealing. Like, oh, this is actually like like funny in a in a simple way, the way I the way I actually like it. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I expected. Okay, this is my favorite part. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't really expect much. I kind of do enjoy going into something completely blind. Um, mm -hmm. All I knew about it was that a year or so ago, our good friend, Mr. Sirock Lofton and I on a previous or on a, a different show, The Seventh Rule, we uh, interviewed uh, Mr. Robert Duncan McNeil, who was actually in the office in Vancouver and they were in pre-production. He's a produce, executive producer and director of the show. And he was in there in pre-production. So he's telling us all about it and how cool it was going to be and what style it was going to be and all that kind of stuff so that's really all i knew about it. i didn't even know alan tudyk was in it uh, until until it opened up um so that's all i, don't I even know if i'm saying his name right also so alan tudyk alan tydyk I, who, who... I think people call it tudyk every time i've heard yeah. it pronounced it's been tudyk so i expected to hope to like it because our good buddy uh is a major part of it that's what we expected. What do we actually get, Michael Kenyon Rosenberg, who's always honest? Except when I'm not, but then I also am. But um, uh, what I got was I did get a sci-fi comedy, but it also had mystery. It also had um, some end of the end of the world type stuff, some cool Armageddon-ish type stuff happening with it, like I said at the top of the show. So um yeah, so I thought that that was a very interesting addition. I like that, uh, he, like we mentioned kind of before, uh, uh, the the alien who, who is named uh, Harry Vanderspiegel. I guess that's not his alien name, but that's the the name of the of the the the, the human whose place he takes. He murders him in the beginning when he first gets there, and then he takes his place as Harry Vanderspiegel. But he learned how to speak English, human English, by instead of not british english but human english he learned how to speak human english by watching law and order and so the 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 whole show kind of takes an interesting i don't know i wouldn't say turn but from my expectations it took a turn mm. to become a little bit of a mystery too which i kind of enjoyed a little bit of a procedural yeah, but not too much sense. they didn't give too much of that uh dr nor what did you actually get after you watched it I, again, I was I was pleasantly surprised at like the Disney esque aspect, especially with the kid, you know, throughout that. I, I, I found that <laughs> I found that hilarious. I just love that he was like trying to you know trying to murder this kid, but not in a way that would be horrifying as as it would normally be if it were for real, but in a very just amusing way. So that to me was yeah. very appealing. He was trying to murder the kid in a Disney way. Yeah, Muhammad, it looks like you're wearing the same undershirt. You collared shirt as the two guys in your picture. Look that was like a little bit like that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. This is just one of my favorite shirts. Wait, are you secretly an alien? <laughs> well, that's episode two to find out. No wonder he knows so much about science. Ooh. 
Well, I'll tell you what I actually got. Um, okay. I got something where I started typing furiously and then I realized that, okay, if I'm going to be making a note of every fact check of everything that doesn't make sense of everything <laughs> that I'm like, well, actually <laughs> hang on. Then I'm going to be just <laughs> typing all day. And then I, I was like, okay, so it's one of those shows that is not going for, you know, most sci-fi shows, they're trying to be realistic. They're trying to be believable. Yeah. They're trying to make you say, oh, this is something that could possibly happen. And they're not really going for that. They're going for uh, a funny sci-fi comedy. And uh, I think they succeeded. It was a very enjoyable show. I'm interested to hear about all of Ryan's nitpicks. I, I started to write some too, but I did the same thing as Ryan. I was like, yeah, okay. Like, how I mean, did you find the kid's house? Like, how did, you know, all that these was things, one like, of the that was one of the big ones. I had like four question marks at the end of that yeah. sentence. How did he know where the kid lived? He didn't know who the kid the kid was the mayor's son or anything. It just it just showed up at the house. Like, okay. <laughs> oh, so that yeah. kid's the mayor's son. Yeah, huh? the lady's huh. the mayor's I didn't wife. know that either. Oh, maybe we didn't get that in the first episode. So ah, somebody okay. much to watch the second episode. Hmm. <laughs> or wait, unless we saw him, was that were those the two parents that? Oh yeah, that's asked? right. They were the parents. Yeah, it did show up. Yeah, See, I didn't right. even reckon, they came to get him out. I didn't even oh, recognize I didn't him either. Yeah. No. Yeah. I just noticed that he was young for a mayor, but that kind of makes it funny. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, What's there were a name? lot of Mayor Ben. <laughs> those kind. Of, okay, like another one was like when he grabs the the ex husband. And pulls him down and it's choking him. And the ex-husband truly believes, hey, I may very well die right now. I don't know. Maybe pull out your gun and shoot him, right? I mean, he just showed him, I got a gun and I'm not afraid to use it. Well, unless my life's in danger, then. <laughs> well, maybe he put his gun down. Maybe he, maybe once it's he true, got we his, didn't see it again. It's maybe true, once he got his, his ex-girlfriend inside, ex-wife inside and started beating her, maybe he decided yeah. to put the gun. Hey, this gun is hindering Maybe me from used beating up my ex-wife <laughs> oh, <God>. yeah oh. <laughs> i got i gotta use this to beat my wife i, I gotta yeah. take it out of my pants and beat my wife with it so yeah so we don't know what mm. happened to i mean he might have like gotten rid of the gun by then but also if you're in that kind of distress you might not be thinking clearly enough to reach down and pull out a gun it's true okay mike well, what I'm what I'm saying I'm is saying that that one doesn't that one doesn't bother me at all. Okay, trying to find the kid's house. Okay, that's that's a little weird. But I thought, I thought it was also surprising <laughs> how much. Yeah, but it's, no, it's, a, how much... it's a small town though. Yeah, but it's not so small where you just go into a house and like that's where the kid lives. <laughs> well, yeah. he, I mean, he saw them drive up, and so maybe he remembered what. Sure, maybe he saw the car because he did see the car that the right. that the um, the mom had. All he had to do was drive around the the neighborhood until he saw that car. That's true. I didn't think about the car. Yeah. And then he could he, maybe he went to like two or three houses before that, but they didn't show us that part because that's boring. So all right, now some I'm, other random kids. Now I'm I'm doubling down on the fact that Michael loved this episode <laughs> because he is red. He is like not gonna. I don't know. Anything. Have you ever heard the term "devil's advocate," though, Ryan? I love the devil. Great, one, so great I movie. Always advocate for him. Great. Movie. So what about Darcy as a bartender? Like she drank a lot as the bartender yeah. <laughs> I mean, she, like every shot everybody else was doing she was taking a shot too i was like this doesn't seem like a stable <laughs> situation yeah uh she also was he... very flirty like a, 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 all oh, the yeah. women all the, all the women are just like i mean the, the alien dude uh tudic guy shows up insults her insults the the dead doctor oh, guy yeah, yeah doing all this stuff and the first thing she does is like wow you're a total dick but you want to go out? <laughs> you you want to hang out and be my boyfriend and stuff? Uh, but but it again, is a small town though. Yeah, the gene pool is town, tiny. So <laughs> any new guy that shows up is like going to be fresh meat, and then like they're all going to pounce. So yeah. But anyway, all those aside, I mean, like, look, it's it's definitely one of those things where that's not the point of the show. Realism yeah. isn't the point of the show. The point of the show is entertainment and a good story, yeah. and I feel like that's what. I feel like that's what I got personally. I thought it was, I thought it was a very enjoyable show. Yes. Good. All right. Now I'm going to double down and say that Ryan did enjoy the show. Well, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I said before. I said you didn't love it though. And I said that you would not watch the second. So let's see if you prove me wrong. So. Well, I'll say this. Uh, I've only seen the first episode of Firefly. 
Okay. Um, in fact, a shame. we reviewed it on this show, right? Right. Not with me. Uh, that was when I was out from a. Uh, All right. From some injuries. I um, gave it a seven, and I said wow. I I would theoretically watch the second episode. I have not. Mm. Um, but so when I saw this guy, I was like, oh, Alan Tudyk. People like him. He was slightly featured in that first episode of that first show uh, of that show Firefly. Um, but he just acted the out of this show. A plus, a plus for him. Unbelievable. I kept finding myself trying to mimic the facial expressions <laughs> he was doing to like <laughs> test my acting muscles. And I'm like, nope, this guy's just better than I am. <laughs> yeah. I can't do it. I, so, I mean, absolutely a plus acting for alan tudyk in my opinion 100 yeah. percent agree i am a very funny man yeah there wasn't a whole lot of like stellar acting from the rest of the cast but uh... <laughs> like uh well no no never mind i was gonna say like who in particular michael oh like the nurse lady i don't i didn't really buy asta. her yeah her name I didn't is like buy her too much asta asta 12 trees that was her asta name love Vista. Um, asta 12 trees yeah exactly asta 12 trees asta asta whatever however you say her name that's what it is yeah the actress is sarah tomko i believe Uh, and i think that you would be correct because i just checked imdb and that is absolutely correct uh but yeah i mean like i like 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 kind of to ryan's point like i didn't really believe that Maybe it's a writing thing, but I, I feel like she didn't really pull it off as an actor either. That like she would be like automatically like interested in this guy just because he's a new guy in town. But um, I mean, she wasn't terrible. I'm just saying it wasn't. There was no <laughs> nothing stale, stellar. I didn't enjoy the sheriff, Big Black. <laughs> yeah, What's that, that Mike that was real. That <laughs> was the other guy. That uh, what about that scene when uh, he's like music? <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. like music. No. I'm so not- I- I saw something about this amazing grace, right? Yeah, yeah. I saw something about this online that apparently that wasn't at least from according to something I saw online that that wasn't originally part of the show, but they found out that he could do that and do that so well. So they worked it in. Ah, that was the first thing I smart. assumed because I'm like, there's no way if they write that in, they can't just hope. Well, hopefully he has really good beatboxing skills. That's not, and that's, you know, what he's going to take a two week course, but yeah, it has to be that they found out he's really good at it. It was a great scene. Well, they could always, in the casting call, say, oh, you have to be able to beatbox to play this role. But it doesn't really seem like that'd be a huge part of that role. Like, No. I, I want to no. defend Asta just a tiny bit. So when they, <laughs> when they went to, when they went to um, the dinner thing, when, he, when she invited him, she just said, like, hey, you did a really good job with that thing. And yeah, he was still kind of weird. But it didn't strike me as the, that it was romantic at all. It struck me more as just a, like, Hey, we just spent several hours dissecting this body. You want to come do dinner? You know, it wasn't, it wasn't a like, Hey, I mean, with Darcy, yes. I mean, Darcy was the bartender. That was definitely like more. Well, I felt <laughs> yeah. that, I mean, I, I saw flirting from both of them, definitely more flirting from the bartender. Yeah. Um, but definitely I did see some flirting from, from, from Asta La Vista. Okay. And, I, uh, I, I didn't feel that, but maybe, I mean, maybe I just wasn't feeling that. Maybe I'm being dense. <laughs> I think maybe it was more that she was unreasonably Lonely. nice to somebody that doesn't seem like she would be nice to under the circumstances. That's that, so I just kind of assume I'm like, okay, I get it. Love interest. Okay, cool. Another thing that I think we could successfully predict is that the town is going to sacrifice their lives to save Alan Tudyk's character because they said 59 to save one. As soon as they said that in the bar, I was like, oh, I get it. They're all going to, you know, sacrifice themselves to stand up and be like, no, you know, or 59 to one, 59 for one or something like that. And that's going to change his mind about destroying the earth. So, right. That's probably going to be in the last episode of the season or something like that, I guess. We just spoiled it for everybody. Sorry, everybody. I mean, it's just a guess. It may may not be right. (laughs) Right. Who knows? (laughs) Uh, but a little bit more about uh, what they call him, Big Black, right? Yeah, um, Sheriff Mike. 
very cool, very funny. Call me Big Black. I don't know that I'm comfortable with that. <laughs> the mayor. <laughs> the mayor. Mayor's a pretty good character. He's yeah. very good. Yeah. There's a great insecurity to him. I love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even like you know, oversharing about his about him being uncomfortable with his wife with the with the alien doctor guy too. <laughs> so, who's your favorite character besides the alien guy? Besides Alan Tudyk's character, because I feel like that's most yeah, likely going to be everybody's. Easy. Well, who's yours, Michael? Big Black. Yeah, I'm gonna pick the deputy Liv. Yeah, okay. she's good too. Yeah. Yeah, what was her last name? Uh, and let die, name. I think. <laughs> <laughs> and let Baker die. Baker, live Baker, deputy right. die. Is it Baker? Uh, I, was like, I, I think Big Black for me too, because you know they they're obviously giving him the the funny lines. Him and Live, Live, Live gave me very strong Tilly vibes from the first season of Discovery. Remember on oh, the literally. first. The first season totally. of Discovery, she was just like that. And then totally. within like six episodes, she was like, I got this. I'm cool. Yep, but yeah, totally. She reminded me of that. Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. San- Sandra from Superstore. I haven't watched that. Sandra's my favorite character on Superstore. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen Superstore. I only saw one episode of that once. <laughs> She's my favorite. And then Garrett, I think. But let, yeah, anyway. WTF um, Superstore. So so what did you guys think Great of his uh what do you think of that his tracker that looked like a torn fishing net? That's yeah. what I thought it was. I feel like maybe he maybe just, it is. He made no, it's yeah, he just jerry rigged it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was really cool. Just, or maybe maybe I, I yeah, I assumed it was a fishing net, but it could also be like a snowshoe. But probably oh, a fishing net. What do you think about that? Or a tennis racket. Mm-hmm. Well, it was kind of stringy. Net. Yeah, it was a little stringy for that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Like Next that. subject. <laughs> I, was Sorry, no, I, was, I was just reading something. Was there was there a line or a scene that particularly uh, stood out to you guys as like the best or the funniest? Was there a scene that really actually made you truthfully laugh out loud? I think it seems where I gasped, like when he opened the coffin. <laughs> that was like, oh my god! <laughs> yeah, I laughed at that part. And there was a few parts that I laughed. I mean, nothing like uproarious laughter, but uh, you know, little giggles here and there. I mean, definitely his demeanor when they're um, uh, when they're dissecting the, the the old doctor, and he was he wants to like play with the brain. Yeah. Um, that's a little, that's kind of a little funny little thing, and. Uh, when he starts dancing, his dancing is just hilarious. <laughs> and, um, they're, they're, they're playing that song. What is it? Starships. It was a, I looked it up. It's a Nicki Minaj song. Oh, um, good. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, his, his dancing, he was just like, yeah. <laughs> uh, but then people were into it and then he kind of, he, he, he loosened up a little bit. And so that, that part was kind of fun and funny. And um, yeah, definitely when big black starts uh, beatboxing and, and then Liv starts like humming along with it, like doing like the trumpets or <laughs> totally. Yeah, <laughs> that was funny. I mean, yeah, there were some good funny parts in this show. I love the scene with the kid in the bed. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> He's like, I'm not gonna hurt you, I'm just gonna kill you. Yeah. When he gave him the finger as the kid was going away, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all good things to remember. What about you, Ryan? Oh boy, there were so many. Um. <laughs> Definitely the dancing was maybe the most fun moment. That's when mm-hmm. I that's when I I felt happy. And I was like, wow, <laughs> like, you know, like sometimes scenes are just made to be happy and fun and to, to to allow us to enjoy the show. And it did that for me. It made me happy. I enjoyed it. I liked the song. Uh, I liked this celebration around it and the silliness of his dance. And I, I found, I tried to imitate that too. And I was like, he's just better than I am in every freaking way. I hate him so much. <laughs> like, uh, he's really good. Really, really good. Um, I also One really th- liked it when he said, uh, when he looked up douchebag, which was kind of an obvious yeah. thing. I'm right, like, right. I'm like, you don't really get points for that from me, but you do get points when he looks up douchebag. And I guess maybe he saw a synonym because then he goes, 
taint and you went oh no it was because it it was because big black said taint right he's like like, feeling it down your taint that that tickle that you're getting in your taint right now yeah (laughs) got it see i missed that i thought that he was just looking for like related terms but when he said taint and he just threw his phone (laughs) i was like okay that's a i actually rewound that and watched that three times (laughs) here's a fun thing that i found out um this is based on a comic book oh yeah the show is based on a comic book so interesting uh, i guess that's probably asta and i i you can't really see this is this is all there was in the frame of the the picture that i saw that i found but uh yeah you know um, know how closely it followed the comic i don't know anything about that i I just found that out literally when i was looking for this graphic and then i saw this and i was like wait a minute is this based on a comic book and then i googled it and it is so Mm. Hmm. Uh, also, the Kung Kung was <laughs> Kung Kung. Uh, was very good when she says, and one of the people here, or no, he said it, and one of the people here is the murderer, Kung Kung, which was <laughs> very funny, um, very good and nice, you know, nice thing. I've never seen uh, CSI, WTF Law and CSI, order. or Law, Law and w- Order. Law and order. WTF <laughs> Law and Order. Law and Order. <laughs> WTF CSI Law and Order you SVU. Want. Special WTS, TF, CSI Miami. CSI is New it, York. There's a new Law and Order right now, right? Isn't there? Like Law and Order Resident. Or not, I don't think Resident. Resident Evil. Alien. No, not yeah, Resident Re- no, Resident Evil. Oh, yeah. Resident Evil. Yeah, that's it. Is it really? <laughs> I think so. Oh, really? I think so. It's something like that. Hang on. Let me Google that. It has the guy from SVU. Uh, Ice T. No. Now no, you guy. you saying that he killed a man and no, I don't really know how he does it, but something like that. Uh, it's not coming up. Anyway, I don't, I'll look at. Oh, organized crime. Ah, oh. uh, organized crime. Close. Uh, I did like. This was great writing towards the end, in my opinion, where they, they reveal that the thing he's looking for is, you know, for a full extinction event and that his mission is to destroy all humans. And then you finally get, okay, I see what this series is going to be about. It's not just the classic fish out of water, but it's a fish that wants to destroy the water who's, wait, no, it's a fish that wants to destroy the land yeah, who's out of the water? Destroy all the land and the water and all inhabitants. No, there because enough. out of no, water, he'll, he'll be okay. His yeah. water is his homeland, and he's yeah. out of the water. Right, this right, 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 right. And he just wants to destroy everything on land, so that there's only water. Right yeah, there, you go. Sink right. the land into the water. <laughs> so that you know that adds that extra element. And now, of course, we understand where it's going to go. He's going to be convinced not to kill them, but then. And then they can do this for many seasons because let's say he doesn't do it, right? Second season, maybe his boss calls in or shows up. and Or maybe that's a, the way Mohammed is acting deadpan. Maybe that means it actually happens in the first season. But <laughs> <laughs> something's going to happen where, you know, they show up and they, they can keep upping the ante for us. And they keep just saying, like, you know, here comes the boss. I thought you said you were going to destroy it. I will. I swear. I swear. Okay. And then comes back. I thought you said, and then the boss is like, fine, I'll do it myself. And then he goes, well, I'll save, you know, there's going to no, be. No, but you don't know these humans. They're actually good people. They're not all bad. Like, But he has this whole monologue that, oh, we, we always knew that humans were dangerous. Um, but we, we thought that, uh, we thought that the, the, their, their need to be social was like a, a, a weakness, but actually that's their greatest strength. So that was kind mm-hmm. of a cool little insightful piece mm-hmm. right there. And like also shows that, okay, he was set to earth because they know that humans are dangerous and they want to stop them from being dangerous beings that are probably eventually going to leave the earth and, and cause trouble for the rest of the galaxy or universe. So I'm also looking yeah. forward. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Mohammed. I was say, that is a good question. I wonder, like, even if humans are bad or whatever, I wonder why the aliens care. I mean, aside from like what you just said, the, right. that we're going to come out and spread our badness. I mean, otherwise, like, why do they care? Okay, they're being bad, but they're on their own little planet being bad. Right. <laughs> the same reason we always stop bad is because it spreads. 
and it harms other things. So maybe they're concerned that humans are going to go kill moon people someday, you know, and the, the moon yeah. people, they're All very those people that live on the moon. Yeah. Yeah. Or they're wrecked, other they're aliens on earth that we're interacting with. Them. One bad <laughs> apple will spoil the bunch. I mean, that's uh, if, if one, one apple is rotting, then they'll all start to rot. Then from, it'll jump from planet to planet and then eventually from system to system and then galaxy to galaxy. And until humans have destroyed the entire universe. So maybe the alien kids are watching Earth like a reality show, and it's oh. poi- and it's poisoning their minds. There and you so, go. like the PTA, right? The Parent Teacher <laughs> Association is like, we we need to go destroy that planet because it's <laughs> really rotting my child's brain. You know, so maybe that's yeah. could be a thing. I'm also Can't looking- change the channel to Mars. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of kids, I'm looking forward to the friendship that this guy is going to make with that kid. I'm assuming right. again another assumption, but eventually. He's going to be like, okay, kid, all right, look, yes, I'm an alien, but don't blow my cover, okay? You know, it's going to be our little, who knows how it's going to go, but it's going to be funny, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think that kid can possibly be his nemesis for an entire series. I think eventually he's going to have to have bigger, (laughs) bigger nemeses. Mm. But I'm looking forward to it. I'm being quiet yep. on this since I've seen a couple of further. I, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, okay. Another All great right. moment was the hangover scene. Oh, yeah. Headache, headache, nausea, severe dehydration. <laughs> He's like, obviously, there's no way that this affects humans the same way or they'd never do it, which is going to, I feel like this show is going to have, you know, these tongue in cheek kind of, critiques of human nature just like all good fish out of water kind of things mm-hmm. do where it's just like boy humans are so silly and we go boy we sure are now that you say it like that <laughs> he's right <We're> idiots <laughs> how are we so dumb uh, yeah. so dangerous maybe was, we're dangerous because we're dumb it was interesting how little reaction there was to him running up and opening the coffin right yeah. i mean everybody kind of gasped but there wasn't any like like you know the, sh- the sheriff Mike wasn't like I'm gonna go arrest this guy or I'm gonna drag him out. It was very much like gasp. Okay, now let's just keep going. <laughs> and the wife just wept. She was just like, "Oh dear. Well, I'm gonna cry more now. I feel yeah. sad." There wasn't. It wasn't everybody like staring at him for the rest of the funeral. I mean, that's. I mean, in reality, of course, everybody would stare really hard. Like, what's going on? <laughs> it would be really an extreme situation. But it was, it was funny that there wasn't much. They just moved on. That's that's one thing I noticed in general in the show. Like. They notice he's weird, but then they just immediately move on. Like, oh, that's weird. Okay. <laughs> this show focuses. Maybe there's a lot of weird. Maybe there's a lot of weirdos out in the middle of Maybe so. nowhere Maybe in Colorado. So. I was trying to figure Colorado. out. I was trying to figure out where in Colorado that would be. Where I was like three hours away from the nearest city. I, uh, I, uh, mm, three hours away from the nearest city. I don't, I don't know. But anyway, whatever. I mean, I guess in a mountain it's town, fictional. you can yeah, go, it's... it could take you three hours just to go 30 miles, maybe with the windy streets or something. Yeah, it's true. It's true. And it was clearly Especially in winter town. too. So they did mention that well, they said one of the streets was closed because they said something about getting the coroner and it was going to be really delayed right. because the streets were closed. So mm-hmm. uh, how do you guys feel about uh, the ex-husband, by the way? Oh, I loved uh, him. Oh, heck yeah. No, no, he's a dick, obviously. Come on. <laughs> what? You're are meant you to hate awful? him. Are you guys looking Especially for when oh sorry. I was just gonna say, are you guys looking for Patience Colorado right now? I did, I, but then it's I already fictional. did, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, that, that was the one scene that I, I found slightly disturbing is like the part where where like Asta was on the floor and he was standing over. I was like, oh, I don't yeah, like he's that. Like beating but, her but it was like a one on. second scene and then she was up and and, and I didn't then, think they, they I didn't think they needed to do that. They could just make him a dick by calling her name, but they they're they're basically wanted to show, I think, to, to convince us that he's a really bad person. Yeah, very quickly, that. very quickly. They, <laughs> they don't want to. They don't want to have to spend the entire show convincing us. Look, he beat he beats his wife. Oh, oh okay, bad guy. Got it. Ir- um, un- yeah. well, but I think they also wanted to justify having what was it, Hank Hen- Henry, like busting through the wall, Harry. Harry busting through the wall to 
to to to to take this dude down so i mean if he's just like yelling at her then it's like what what motivation does he really have to bust uh, through point. the wall to i'm gonna to put on down? i'm gonna put on my mic hat and say he also tried to choke out a child so he so <laughs> so we believe that he's willing to kill things on a whim you know he showed up at a house killed somebody tried to kill a child eh, he, he'll kill the dude if he just thinks the guy is flirting with his girl you know like but uh, I did love his response to Asta when Asta said, "Like, so how did you learn to do that?" He's like, "Yoga." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, okay. What kind of yoga is that? <laughs> yeah, I should sign up for that class. <laughs> do they? Do you think they do it online? Maybe. <laughs> Still do yoga, Michael? Uh, every once in a while, yeah. Oh, cool. You know, I think so. Anyway, the the my final thought on this show is that they're more interested in emotional truth rather than the actual, like getting all the details to be accurate or correct. Basically it's just like, okay, it's the the story taking out the details. The story just is, you know, he realizes that this ex-husband guy is a super bad dude and it enrages him. And he says, screw it, turns around, goes back, and beats him up you know the the details on what justifies exactly the the amount of violence he puts or what makes him you know how far his car drives before it turned around you know those are all just details but the Mm -hmm. emotional truth works for for this entire series or episode the emotional truth works uh we're just kind of nitpicking on the details of saying well what if would would she really like this guy that quickly and stuff (laughs) like that but i enjoyed it good all right we all liked it yep yay end of the episode it's a win. <laughs> speaking of things we all like it's time to talk about dr muhammad nor oh <laughs> i thought i thought i thought we we're thinking about talking about things we like he's something that we love <laughs> love Aww, yeah <laughs> you guys are too kind. oh wait we gotta uh, we, we we there we go heart emoji <laughs> heart reaction right there it's her she's thinking about us in this show uh well muhammad today we wanted to discuss this awesome star trek podcast that you do or did you don't really uh i don't know if you're still doing it but you did two series you do bio trekkie explains and you also do uh the other one with the admiral what is that the admiral bio trekkie and so so one one is bio trekkie explains and that one's still going that one right now is just a monthly podcast so it's it's pretty light in that sense and the other one that was a that was a temporary one that i just did through january and february that was bio trekkie with the admiral and that had uh my my friend and awesome actress uh jane brooke who played admiral katrina cornwell in star trek discovery so for bio trekkie with the admiral what we did is we just went through the um the episodes of season three of discovery. And I talk about, especially like the, the science and, and particularly the biology from every episode. And she would ask a lot of really good, insightful questions. One thing I loved about Jane is she would ask really, really good questions about the science, but also give really good analogies to say, Oh, well, that sounds like when blah, blah, blah happens in real life. I'm like, Oh my gosh, that's like an amazing analogy. Yes. <laughs> so that was great. <laughs> But then she'd also then talk about the production side, which she wasn't involved in the production of season three, but she was obviously involved in Star Trek before, but she would pick up things about, you know, about the spacing or about how different things were shot and things like that, and things that I wouldn't have picked up otherwise. But it was just a conversational series, about 30 minutes each episode. And they were really, really fun to do. I really enjoyed doing that. I wish there were more episodes of Discovery so we could just continue doing that, though. We have talked about maybe at some point going back and doing seasons one and two, but yeah. we haven't done that yet. Do, do you use some of her analogies in your teaching now? or? Well, I mean, that, that, that finished just in February. So this semester, I'm just oh, doing yeah. a grad seminar, but I totally will. <laughs> They're really good. <laughs> you but said yeah, you... my other series, which is going, is by Tricky Explains. And that, that's yeah. not specific to Discovery. That just is, right. you know, I pick a different uh, show each time. So I think my, my one for May, I think I'll just say it here, even though I haven't, I haven't told anybody else yet, but Whoa, coming for the first this time is here. It. All right. <laughs> My one for May is from uh, the Star Trek Next Generation, the episode Evolution. I'm going to basically just oh, introduce yeah. the concept of natural selection using the nanites that Wesley released. <laughs> but each, each episode is something like that. And those are much shorter. Those episodes are like between six and 10 minutes. It's just like one concept from biology introduced using some Star Trek examples and then just break it down. Informational. Nice. Um, yeah. 
Well, you said that you did uh, the, the bio trekkie with the Admiral uh, for two months, but I think there are like 14 episodes. Were you releasing two episodes a week? So what we did is we the first episode of bio trekkie with the Admiral, we just talked about the pilot. After that, we did pairs of episodes in each one. Right. Okay. Yeah. So here's something I was thinking about yesterday um, on my my daily 20 minute think about Muhammad uh, <laughs> routine was I was thinking taking out the, the bio Trekkie explained and focusing more on the Jane Brooke uh, podcast you did with her. What, was there something about it that you just, you never expected? It was like a big surprise or it was better. It was better than you expected or it was, or it was more difficult than you expected. I mean, what, what were the surprises that kind of came with doing a podcast with somebody else? Well, yeah, it's true. That's a good point. I'd never actually done a podcast with another person before. So, I mean, honestly, it was just really a lot of fun. Just in the sense of, it would end up just being a Zoom conversation with Jane, who already was a friend of mine. So just having a great chat, that was that was great. I wouldn't say that was a surprise. I mean, I, I fully anticipated I would enjoy that. that was <laughs> or great. you wouldn't have done it. Right? <laughs> no, exactly. The production on that was much easier than for Biotrekkie Explains because Biotrekkie Explains, like I show up just at the very beginning, the very end, but everything else is like constant graphics being added in. Mm. This was basically just splice a Zoom thing and maybe take out a couple of little misspeaks. So the editing on that and the time investment on that was much lighter. I guess the thing that surprised me most was just her talent with uh, with the analogies and with asking like really, really insightful questions on the biology. I knew she would about the production side because I mean, that's of course her specialty, but mm -hmm. just, she was just so on top of that. And just, and so, and we didn't rehearse things ahead of time. I mean, we, we talked just very briefly, but here's the general things I'm going to talk about. Okay. Here's the general things I'm going to talk about, but it'd be like a two minute conversation. Then we'd have our 30 minute conversation that was recorded. And it was really very, very enjoyable. <laughs> so you don't, you don't rehearse, huh? Michael and I always rehearse our line. Oh, you didn't. We were supposed to say the lines oh, together at that to point. No lines. 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 <laughs> no, we do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, well, everybody loved that podcast. It was really cool. And you're talking Thanks. about doing possibly the first two seasons, but have you actually put any serious consideration into doing it again, either for the fourth season or for a different yes. subject matter or anything like yeah, that. I think we, I think we'd be very down. Well, I mean, I can't speak for Jane, but I think <laughs> I would for <laughs> sure. And I think she would be uh, open to doing it for the fourth season for sure. I'm not positive about going back and doing seasons one and two, but we'll see. I mean, we're, basically what we just said is like, well, let's wait till summer and then we'll discuss it. Then the other thing we've talked about is the possibility of maybe doing something at a convention. If, if amazingly those come to fruition again, <laughs> One of these some days. Yeah, fingers crossed. Be fun some to see everybody in person again. <laughs> yeah. uh, was there ever a comment left on one of the videos that really stood out to you, whether it was something mean and nasty or whether it was something just so nice that was like, it was nicer than any of the others or, or, it, or something interesting that you hadn't thought about? Was there ever a comment left that really stood out to you? Brian, are you looking ever. for congratulations right here or something? Are you fishing Pardon? for compliments? <laughs> I never leave comments. No. <laughs> I don't remember ever anything, anybody putting anything mean at all. I mean, there would be occasional spam things. I just go through and delete those with it. But people were very kind. I mean, our, our friend from 7th Rule, War Dog Heim, would always leave it, you know, a really kind comment talking about things right. that, that showed up in the show. A couple other people. There, there's one person who on Twitter is Gloria Gen X. She'd often comment on things. But it was often just really kind things. There was one biologist who commented a lot. But I don't remember if it was for explains or for the one with Admiral. There's one biologist whose name is Sharon Minsuk. She commented on a lot of the videos too. And she sometimes actually uh, disagree with some points I would make. And we'd I mean, sometimes have a back and forth in the comments like, well, I think it's this one. I was like, well, but, but what it's about fun. this? And it, but it wouldn't be, it wasn't at all hostile. It was just different perspective, largely agreeing, but you know, arguing some of the- should have a show where just the two of you debate biology. <laughs> yeah. I'm but not get, sure that would go over well. But get <laughs> hostile. Might be too much of the weeds. Definitely. <laughs> use the hostility this time yeah, we're on your side so hey thank you <laughs> i don't know anything about her but we're on your side i'm i'm on her side hey shout out by the way to uh bill erickson out in the blue skies of montana you mentioned him uh war dog heim. war dog heim great dude he's very supportive of the community we all love him totally and speaking of which it's now time oh, Sabrina yes. Wood, too, from Sci-Fi Sisters. She'd often comment with really great stuff, too. We love her. We just had her again on uh, on our show to review Vikings, which nice. just happened oh, last week. Yeah. Just happened last week. 
So um, now speaking of Sabrina and Bill Erickson, it's time for their favorite part of the show, which is the terrible twos. <laughs> the bottom line. Mike does the karate chop, so I joined him this time. For the bottom line, because I'm, I'm underscoring the bottom line. Bottom All right. So it's line. the final two questions of bottom line. this. It's the final, the, the bottom line. Final two questions of uh, this episode here of this review. It's really the two most important questions. All the others were fun. These are important. Yeah. This is my favorite part. Is it really? No, I don't know. <laughs> you know I love things that are people's favorites and least favorites. Just tell me your favorite sector. Um, I think my favorite is the very end when I say my thing that I always say. I was thinking that, that actually. <laughs> and, and also um, when I give the synopsis, that's that's actually my very favorite. You do you do put your heart in because it. I can do it like this. Yeah, and I can I say things like this in this kind of voice. The synopsis voice <laughs> in a world where. <laughs> <laughs> so, you okay. guys, this is it. Question go. number one. It's the real nitty gritty, everybody. Mm -hmm. Do not go pee. Do not eat that potato chip. You know, because when you eat chips, it's loud and you actually kind of can't hear what you're watching for like mm -hmm. three or four mm -hmm. seconds, but it tastes no like granola. you don't care. <laughs> Just wait. No apples. Here's the key. Question number one, Michael Kenyon Rosenberg, scale of one to 10, what would you give this first episode of Resident Alien entitled Pilot? I would give the first episode of Resident Alien entitled Pilot uh, out of a score of 10, a score of 8.5. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I quite enjoyed Ow. this show a lot. And uh, yeah, I love the, the humor in it. Uh, I love Alan Tudyk. I think his, his performance was stellar. I agree that the writing was great. I love the mystery. Um, yeah, I loved everything about this show. Um, it's, you know, it's still, you know, not all of the performances were stellar. And I'm not saying that the, that the, that the actors were bad. Um, it's not like... A, not like Babylon 5. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. That, of Babylon that's 5. the most comments we've ever gotten ever. And it was all, hey, there were four of us <laughs> and three out of four of us said it was okay or good. Michael said it wasn't good. And we got like 50 comments saying, screw you. I'm going to yeah. find out where you live. We love Babylon yeah. 5. They never <laughs> did though. So, um, good thing it wasn't the yeah. alien who did it. Also, we would have found out where you live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm safe. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it was it was good. It, it wasn't. Uh, it didn't uh, completely blow my pants off, but uh, I liked it a lot, and I give it an eight point five. So. Wowie! But then, Doctor Muhammad Noor, what would you give? The same give? Score. <laughs> I was going to give the same score on with my really? eight point five. Yeah, wow. I really liked it a lot. I mean, I. I I really like silliness as long as it doesn't go over the top. And like, this was like just for me, just the right level of silly. <laughs> so, yeah. And like you said, Alan Tudyk's performance was stellar. I mean, that, that, oh. <laughs> out of this world, man. Completely. <laughs> stellar. Alien. Isn't that that play? <laughs> Stella. Oh, Stella. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I too would just get the hat trick. Kidding. Just kidding. Um, I'm going to give it a solid straight up the middle. Eight. Five. Eight. Okay. Uh, That's much better yeah. than I thought you'd give it. That's awesome. Yeah. I thought you might find it too silly. I'm glad you didn't. <laughs> Never Ryan loves too silly. silly. Yeah. Ryan <laughs> loves silly. That's why Michael and I get along. He's a silly <laughs> pants. He's just a silly panties. Uh, eight point. Awesome. Uh, no, 8.0. Uh, straight up the middle. It was pretty easy for me it was, it was good the bottom line is the bottom line is that for me that it's an enjoyable show yeah you can turn it on you don't have to memorize everything you don't have to pay attention to every single tiny detail you don't have to you know memorize every line of every character you can and you would enjoy it but 
it's a show you can just put on, relax, eat some popcorn, smile, have fun, and come away from it in a better mood than when you started it. And that, to me, that's invaluable, especially nowadays. People are a little ornery lately. I don't know if you guys noticed. So I do enjoy shows that are just saying, hey, take a load off for 42 minutes. Come hang out with us. We're gonna have we're gonna be fun, especially yeah. in this this dancing scene that you're gonna love. Check it out. <laughs> we're gonna tell people some jokes. Do, people do seem kind of horny lately. You're right. Muhammad, please forgive him. <laughs> he knows not what he says. Um, so, I was wondering, did I hear that right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you say ornery instead? Oh, I said no. ornery. I would yeah, never say the H word. H- ornery. Yeah, ornery. <laughs> but this one, this question is even more important, you guys. Mm-hmm. For the purposes of this podcast, we all had to watch the first episode of Resident Alien entitled Pilot. But now that this podcast is over and we're all free to move about the internet, would you, of your own volition, watch the second episode michael kenyon with a k rosenberg an emphatic yes yes (laughs) (laughs) all right yes just like that well that's three yeses good night everybody (laughs) uh muhammad what about you I bought the whole season on Amazon. I guess that says (laughs) it right there. (laughs) So I don't have a, I don't have a streaming service that has it. So I was like, well, uh, this, I saw the, I think the first one when I saw it was on Peacock and you could see it for Mm -hmm. free on that, but then it it moved off or something like something changed where I couldn't get it anymore. I couldn't get subsequent episodes. Like, no, I want to keep watching this. So I ended up just buying it. And my wife was actually out of town when I saw the whole series. And then she got, she just got back a couple weeks. And I told her you should start watching and she'd be watching it. And I'd end up plopping down saying, like, I want to watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That good. Huh? I really liked it. Uh, and so they let you watch the first episode for free. Say it with me. That is how they get that you. That is how they get you. Yeah. That's, that's how they get. Um, they got me. Truth <laughs> statement. How about you, Ryan? I would. I would watch yes. it. I didn't think I would. Yeah. I didn't think so because I hadn't heard much about the show. I didn't, you know, I didn't really know much about it. So I just automatically assume like I'm pretty snooty. So I'm a, I'm a tough critic, but I think that this show is enjoyable. I'm going to keep using that same word enjoyable. It's enjoyable and charming enough to where, yeah, why there's no harm in it. It's not going to stress you out. It's not going to disappoint you. You're just going to watch it and be put in a good mood and you're going to have fun. So and Alan Tudyk deserves us to tune in. If nothing else, he's killing it. He did a great job. And the producers and whomever were correct in their decision to cast him, in my opinion. Very good. Very good. Mm-hmm. Well, that's it. We did it, guys. Three for three. Is this three. the highest average? No. Nope. No. No, okay. I wasn't sure what the highest average was. It's one of them. Maybe certainly top 10. Certainly okay. top mm-hmm. 10. Yeah. Um, maybe top six or seven. Um, similar shows. Yeah, what were the, the top ones? The I'm highest, curious. I think, is like the highest average is probably like 9.75 or something. Correct. Whoa, or, what or was Golden that? Girls. Golden, Golden Girls. Girls. Oh, Golden Girls. Oh, okay, that's fair. <laughs> I, was, I was unprepared for how much it would grab me, shake me around and say, you better give me a 10 or you don't deserve to use words thank Mm -hmm. you for being a friend (laughs) uh we also gave very high marks to uh raised by wolves raised by wolves that's the highest mike ever gave with a 9.8 we also gave very high marks to the boys on amazon oh yeah and uh so on oh also lost the first episode of Lost. oh yeah that oh yeah that was that was epic yeah fair (laughs) those were like top three I anyway. remember we only watched the first of things. So, I mean, these are these are just the shows that have the best first Pilots. episodes yeah, yeah, yeah. that we've seen. It's Yeah, right. It's not a, you know, a, a, you know, we, you know, we watched yeah. Seinfeld. We didn't say the series of Seinfeld wasn't a seven, but that's what we gave the episode or lower. <laughs> you know? Right. Uh, anyway, we've got to run everybody at home. But please remember, if I don't say this, Michael Kenyon Rosenberg really lets me have it. Please remember to, in the comments below, say WTF 
and whatever show you'd like us to review bonus points. If you tell us how we can stream it, where we can find it, whether yeah. it's Disney plus or Amazon. Otherwise we spend all this time saying yeah. where to stream. I guess it's five seconds, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I can just ask Alexa, Alexa, this show, and then she'll like pull it up and. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think this is it. Please be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell for notifications when we put out a new episode. Comment below and give us a like. Share this video. Tell your friends. This is it. Always remember what Mr. Michael Kenyon Rosenberg likes to say. Almost. You forgot what this podcast was. This podcast certainly was, oh, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> this podcast was a fish out of water, but then it found the water and then destroyed the land. I hadn't thought of one in advance. This podcast was a love fest for a cool new show. Hey, <laughs> yeah, we like that. I actually did think about mine ahead of time. That's why I was able to throw it out when I had <laughs> forgotten it. Because when you mentioned that my dad said that certainly was, wasn't it? That's like one of my favorite lines he ever says. So I was like, oh, we got to use that. We got to tie yeah. that in. So everybody at home, if you, let's say you just came back from something and you're supposed to say <laughs> something about it, but you don't know, you just go, well, that certainly was, wasn't it? And you'll be the most popular person in that room. It sure was. Now, please remember what Mr. Michael Kenyon Rosenberg always likes to say. Don't forget, register to be an organ donor. And don't forget to watch the first of things, especially Resident Alien. Freeze frame. <laughs>